The archaea or archaeobacteria are quite diverse both in morphology and physiology. The name comes from Greek, archaeos meaning ancient and bacterium a small rod. They can stain either gram positive or gram negative and may be spherical, rod shaped, spiral, lobed, plate shaped, irregular shaped or pleomorphic. Some are single cells whereas others form filaments or aggregates. They range in diameter from 0.1 to over 15 micrometer and some filaments can grow up to 200 micrometer in length. Multiplication may be by binary fission, budding, fragmentation or other mechanisms. Archaeobacteria are just as diverse physiologically. They can be aerobic, facultatively anaerobic or strictly anaerobic. Nutritionally, they range from chemolithoautotrophs to organotrophs. Some are mesophiles, others are hyperthermophiles that can grow above 100 degrees centigrade. Archaeobacteria are often found in extreme aquatic and terrestrial habitats. They are often present in anaerobic, hypersaline or high temperature environments. Archaeobacteria have been discovered in cold environments as well. It appears that they constitute up to 34% of the prokaryotic biomass in coastal arctic surface waters. A few are symbionts in animal digestive systems as well. The cell wall of archaeobacteria. Archaeobacteria can stain either gram positive or gram negative. Their cell wall structure and chemistry differs from that of the eubacteria. There is considerable variety in archaeobacterial cell wall structure. Many gram positive archaeobacteria have a wall with a thick single homogeneous layer like gram positive eubacteria. Gram negative archaeobacteria lack the outer membrane and complex peptidoglycan network or sacculus of the gram negative eubacteria. Instead, they usually have a surface layer of protein or glycoprotein subunits. The chemistry of archaeobacterial cell walls is also quite different from that of eubacteria. None of them have the muraminic acid and the D-amino acids characteristic of eubacterial peptidoglycan. All archaeobacteria resist attack by lysozyme and beta-lactame antibiotics such as penicillin. Gram-positive archaeobacteria can have a variety of complex polymers in their cell walls. Some archaeobacteria like methanobacterium have walls containing pseudomurin a peptidoglycan polymer that has L-amino acids in its cross-linked N-acetalomuraminic acid instead of N-acetylmuraminic acid and a beta-1,3 glycosidic bond instead of a beta-1,4 glycosidic bond. Some archaeobacteria contain complex polysaccharides similar to chondritin sulfate of animal connective tissue. Other heteropolysaccharides are also found in gram-positive walls. Gram-negative archaeobacteria have a layer of protein or glycoprotein outside their plasma membrane. The layer may be as thick as 20 to 40 nanometers. Sometimes there are two layers or a sheath surrounding an electron-dense layer. The chemical content of these walls varies considerably. Many methanogens and several extreme thermophiles have glycoproteins in their cell wall. In contrast, other meth methanogens and extreme thermophiles can have protein walls. The lipids and me lipid membranes of archaea. A most distinctive feature of the archaeobacteria is the nature of their membrane lipids. They differ from both eubacteria and eukaryotes in having branched chain hydrocarbons attached to glycerol by ether links rather than fatty acid connected by ester links. Sometimes two glycerol groups are linked to form an extremely long tetraether. Usually the diether side chains are 20 carbons in size and the tetraether side chains are 40 carbons in size. The overall length of the tetraethers can be adjusted by cyclizing the chains to form pentacyclic rings and bifetyl rings. They may contain 1 to 4 cyclopentyl rings. Polar lipids are also present in archaeobacterial membranes. Phospho 
phospholipids, sulfolipids and glycolipids can also be found. 7 to 30 percent of the membrane lipids are non-polar which usually are derivatives of squalene. These lipids can be combined in various ways to yield membranes of different rigidity and thickness. For example, the C20 diethers can be used to make a rigid bilayer membrane. A much more rigid monolayer membrane can be constructed out of C40 tetraether lipids. Of course, archibacterial membranes may contain a mixture of diethers, tetraethers and other lipids. The membranes of extreme thermophiles are almost completely tetraether monolayers to maintain stability. Genetics and Molecular Biology Some features of archibacterial genetics are similar to those in eubacteria. Their chromosome is a single closed DNA circle. However, the genomes of some archibacteria are significantly smaller than the normal eubacterium. E. coli DNA has a size about 2.5 into 10 to the power of 9 Daltons, whereas thermoplasma DNA is about 0.8 into 10 to the power of 9 Daltons and methanobacterium DNA is 1.1 into 10 to the power of 9 Daltons. The variation of G and C content is great from about 21 to 68 percentage. This is another sign of archibacterial diversity. Archibacteria have few plasmids. Archibacterial mRNA appears similar to that of eubacteria rather than to eukaryotic mRNA. Polygenic mRNA has been discovered and there is no evidence for mRNA splicing. Archaeobacterial promoters are similar to those in eubacteria. Despite these and other similarities, there are also many differences between archaeobacteria and other organisms. Unlike both eubacteria and eukaryotes, the T arm of the archaeobacterial tRNA lacks thymine and contains pseudouridine or 1 methyl pseudouridine. Although archaeobacterial ribosomes are 70S like eubacterial ribosomes, electron microscopic studies show that their shape is quite variable and sometimes differs from both eubacteria and eukaryotic ribosomes. Their elongation factor 2 reacts with diphtheria toxin like the eukaryotic factor EF2. Some archaeobacteria, such as many methanogens, differ from other prokaryotes in having histone proteins that bind with DNA to form nucleosome-like structures. Archaeobacterial DNA-dependent RNA polymerases resemble the eukaryotic enzymes, not the eubacterial RNA polymerases. They are large, complex enzymes and are insensitive to the drugs rifam. In view of the variety of their lifestyles, archaeobacterial metabolism also greatly differs between its members and the groups. Some archaeobacteria are organotrophs, others are autotrophic. A few even carry out an unusual form of photosynthesis. Archaeobacterial carbohydrate metabolism is better understood than most. The enzyme 6-phosphofructokinase has not been found in archaeobacteria and they do not appear to degrade glucose by the way of the embedded Mayerhoff pathway. Extreme halophiles and thermophiles catabolize glucose using a modified form of the antenna duranoff pathway in which the initial intermediates are not phosphorylated. The haplophiles have slightly different modifications of the pathway than do the extreme thermophiles but still produce pyruvate and NADH or NADPH. Methanogens do not catabolize glucose to any significant extent. In contrast with glucose degradation, gluconeogenesis proceeds by a reversal of the embed and mayor of pathway in halophiles and methanogens. All archaebacteria that have been studied 
can oxidize pyruvate to acetyl CoA. They lack the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex present in eukaryotes and respiratory eubacteria. They use the enzyme pyruvase oxidoreductase for this purpose. Halophiles and the extreme thermophiles seem to have a functional tricarboxylic acid cycle. No methanogen has yet been found with a complete TCA. Evidence for functional cytochromes chains has been obtained in halophiles and thermophiles. Very little is known in detail about the biosynthetic pathways in archaeobacteria. Burgi's Manual of Systemic Bacteriology divides archaea into two kingdoms, Crin archaeota and U archaeota. U archaeota is further divided into four major groups, methanogens, halobacteria, thermoplasms and thermococci. Methanogenic archaeobacteria, they are strict anaerobes and methane is the major metabolic end product. Sulfur may be reduced to hydrogen sulfide without yielding energy production. Cells possess coenzyme M, factors 420 and 430 and methanopterin. Archaeobacterial sulfate reducers. They are irregular gram-negative coccoid cells. Hydrogen sulfide formed from thiosulfate and sulfate. Autotrophic growth is with thiosulfate and hydrogen. They can grow heterotrophically. Traces of methane are also formed. Extremely thermophilic and strictly anaerobic in nature. They possess factor 420 and methanopterin but not coenzyme M or factor 430. Extremely halophilic archaeobacteria. Coccoid or irregular shaped rods, they are gram negative or gram positive. They are primarily aerobic chemoorganotrophs and require high sodium chloride concentrations for growth. Colonies are of various shades of red, neutrophilic or alkalophilic in nature. These mesophilic, neutrophilic or alkalophilic, mesophilic or highly thermophilic. Some species contain bacteriorhodopsin and use light for ATP synthesis. Cell wall less archibacteria. They are pleomorphic cells lacking a cell wall. They are thermoacidophilic and chemoorganotrophic, facultative anaerobes. The plasma membrane contains a mannose rich glycoprotein and a lipoglycan. Extremely thermophilic sulfur metabolizers. They are gram negative rods, filaments, or cocci, who are obligate thermophilic with an optimum growth temperature between 70 to 110 degrees centigrade. They are usually strictly anaerobes but may be aerobic or facultative. They can be acidophilic or neutrophilic, autotrophic or heterotrophic. Most of them are sulfur metabolizers. Sulfur is reduced to hydrogen sulfide anaerobically. Hydrogen sulfide or sulfur is oxidated to sulfuric acid anaerobically.